Hey there, YouTubers. So I'm going to talk about some things to do that will help you get the most out of your 12th gen CPU. A lot of these things I've done with previous generations. Quite a few of them work today. Some of these features are hard to find. Uh, some of them are not in all motherboards. So you may have to spend a little bit more. I will tell you, I've bought three 12th gen motherboards. I need to go and buy one more that's a little more high end. Um, just so I can, you know, get some of these these features uh, across more of my CPUs. Now, uh, just to rewind, I've got uh, four 12th Gen CPUs. I3 12100F, I5 12400F, I7 12700F, and the I5 12600K. Uh, on top of all the other freaking CPUs I have. So, there's four of those, three motherboards. An ASRock Z690, we've got a ASUS Prime H610M, and then an ASRock B660M-HDV, okay? All of those are cheaper motherboards in their respective uh, groups, right? So, not the cheapest Z690, but it was close. I do have the cheapest H610, and I have the cheapest B660M. So, a lot of the features that we're going to talk about are not... Uh, applicable to those motherboards okay so now some of these things will be more beneficial with a better cpu so if you're coming into this with an intel celeron most likely none of these things are really going to help you with performance it's going to be terrible um pretty much the same with the pentium when you get to the i3 things start to get better but uh it pales in comparison to the improvement you'll see in something like the i9 uh, 12900F, which yours truly, hopefully, will get a hold of. All right. So, a lot of things to do. Depending on your CPU, I definitely recommend an upgraded CPU cooler for the i7-12700 and up. Okay, so the i7-i9. Uh, example here. Let's try and blow this up a little bit. So this is using replay mode, the exact same computer. The only difference was the CPU was changed out as well as the cooler. And then one setting that changed, and we'll talk about that. Um, but before we do that, this is basically what you're getting out of the box. Default settings, um, Intel stock cooler, 364 FPS is what I got playing I think this is 1080p competitive settings, Fortnite, temperature 68, wattage 64.9, okay, RTX 3090 graphics card. Now, upgraded CPU cooler to 120 millimeter CPU cooler from Noctua. Also adjusted power limits to unlimited. That FPS, folks, went up to 404, so that's a 40 FPS gain. Whatever reason, our 1% low was less, considerably less, and our 0.1% low was uh, considerably less. So these guys, you know, with MSI Afterburner, sometimes I wonder about them, but that is, you know, uh, that could be a detractor for some of you, okay? Temperature dropped from 68 to 62. Amount of wattage used by the CPU, 88. So, uh, and you also see the frequency, core frequency there, considerably higher, right? So, we're definitely turbo boosting more here. The temps are, uh, or excuse me, we are doing a higher turbo boost than what's going on over here. Using a lot more power. With that additional power, we have to cool it off, right? Uh, this one struggles, so... Over here, the Noctua cooler takes care of it. I have since put on the 140 millimeter one, but this i7 is now on a uh, B660M motherboard. So this temp would be uh, even lower. Uh, but so what do you get out of this, folks? Yeah, this, this made significant improvement uh, for most aspects of gaming. All right. Benchmark wise, I got... I went from uh, a really low score, which you can see here, 84.57 with the stock cooler, all the way up to 20,568. Now, there could have been some other things happening. 
And I will tell you, power limit throttling was an issue, okay? So one of the solutions to power limit throttling is to uh, take your power limits and raise them. Uh, in my case, I went all out unlimited, all right? So we were able to solve some of those problems. Will you see this with the i9? I would bet you would, okay? So there are a lot of other things that you would need to do to make this happen good. The motherboard, folks, is uh, key to this. Increasing, uh, you know, if you're buying a cheap motherboard that's only got a 1x8 and you want to get the most performance out of the i7, i9, you're going to want to look at one that has a 1x8 and an additional 1x4 or two 1x8s. And that's the CPU power connector I'm talking about, okay? For the i3, i5, Celeron, Pentium, it's not going to matter. Another thing you can do, this isn't on the cheap motherboards. Um, it's not on any of the three that I have. Adjusting your block frequency. All right, so if you don't know what this is, uh, we're not going to go into a whole lot of detail because I can't show it to you because I don't have it on my motherboard. But back in the day, I was already doing this. And uh, in this case, this is an unlock processor, but that same motherboard that I did this on, I could do it with a... Uh, with a lock processor and this this is going back to 10th gen so able to significantly increase my fps back then using uh, raising the block frequency now if you want to find out more about this unfortunately like i said i can't show it to you for 12th gen because i do not have uh, a motherboard that supports it but if you go up to youtube and type in i believe that exact thing there block frequency 12th gen yeah, right here, I already searched for it. You should find an article by somebody, uh, or excuse me, a video about it. And in that video, uh, they'll tell you, you know, what motherboard they're using. It looks like an expensive motherboard. So finding a cheaper one is another story, right? So, uh, but this can represent one of the most significant increases for a lock processor. It does generate more heat. So once again, you're back to needing an upgraded CPU cooler, you probably, like I said, also, well, you'll have to buy a better motherboard. Suddenly, you know, all the money you're spending, you might have been better off buying the unlock processor and buying a Z690. So um, there is, you know, some positives and negatives with that. But if you're fixed on having a lock processor and you want to get the most out of it, this is one of those ways to increase it. Now, an example that I have of a lock processor, this was the i3-10320, which already, in my opinion, kind of ran hot. Upgraded CPU cooler, cheap uh, $25 one that somebody sent me for free, I think. Or I might have bought, I might have actually bought this one. Uh, but uh, this guy, you know, did make an improvement. This GTX 1080, of course, an old season of Fortnite where FPS was a lot higher. And this is 1080p low, very CPU intensive setting. And we got some pretty high uh, FPS out of it. Now, surprisingly though, the wattage did not really increase beyond 65 for this thing, uh, or even, you know, get to 65. And I think if you do the math on this, this thing is supposed to run up to 4,300. And with this additional, uh, the 102.9, basically it's a 2.9% uh, increase over what it was. So I think that is, that's the difference between what this would have ran at. So higher uh, core frequencies, your RAM is going to run higher. You do have to be careful with your RAM. If it can't handle, if it can barely handle running at 3200 and you adjust this to... Um, you know, the block frequency increase it from 100 to 102.9 your ram may cause your computer to crash okay may not even boot up so that is something uh to keep an eye out and make sure you understand that um once again beyond the scope of this because we do not have a 12th gen that supports it so talking about motherboards you know running these benchmarks power limits Black frequency. Don't be cheap on 
two things. One, your motherboard, if you want to increase these things. Get one that at least has the 1x4 and the 1x8. Um, if you are looking at i7, i9, not as you know important for an i5 and below. Uh, definitely not important for an i3 and below. The i5, you know, is, is kind of right on that borderline where you might see a little bit of increase, uh, but most likely you're not going to notice anything. So i7, i9, boom. Make sure your motherboard has that, which means you need an upgraded power supply, probably at least 750, 850 and up. Uh, those are the ones that usually have the two sets of CPU power connectors. Of course, you can get a uh, 650 water. It may not have the additional cable with it, and you may have to buy it. But uh, there are, you know, if you get a platinum one, it should uh, you shouldn't have any issues. So uh, those are the things basically that you need. Finally, you know, another way to increase your performance, obviously, with the lock processors, is buying better RAM. Uh, is it worth it? Sometimes it is. This guy here, I may just buy this, folks. Uh, $20 off, 4400 Now, if it's compatible with any of my motherboards, another story, but that's a good price. Um, the performance difference between this and, you know, 2666 can be uh, decent. I've done some videos on that. Uh, of course, you know, sometimes quantity versus quality uh, can also be just as good uh, if the the speeds of the RAM are, are nearly the same. Um, however, in this case, 4,400 megahertz of this versus 2,666, you should see some improvement. So that's really all I have, folks. Those are the things I suggest that you do to increase your 12th gen performance. All right. Thank you.